And right back here, I don't know if you guys can see, it's a big rotten spot from about here to there. Fragile, it's breaking a little easier, so when I pull on it, um, yeah, I didn't have to take any of the screws off. I'm rain, they just came over and staple it around right here. So when the water comes in underneath that loose molding, it just went straight into here and pretty much rotten, rotted out this whole thing. I don't know how salvageable this membrane is going to be. You can see there's a lot of damage that's been done here before. They Built for a toy hauler. Should match the ceiling material that was on there. And that's why I'm going to change out the ceiling because uh, I'm already at this point. Hey, Editing James here. Uh, I just wanted to update. I've been reading the comments on the first video. I, I didn't tell anybody this, but the owners of this RV, this, this Weekend Warrior fifth wheel, they're my friends. And so I'm just kind of razzing them in my video. Uh, no hate to them whatsoever. They're really good people. Uh, yeah, this is just for fun. They're, they're, it's okay. All right, back to the video. So, because I can't bring myself to be that cheap, I'm going to go ahead and replace the ceiling paneling right here. And then when I put the new stud right there, it'll be a backing staple place for it. It'll press just barely on the ledge on this side. Uh, now's the time to do this if we're going to do it. So I am figured I might as well do it right. So I just have to cut out this old paneling. I'll use this as a template of where to cut at. And then we'll put it back in place. Right. Let's that out. Look at that. We got a sunroof now. Let me cut all these screws out of the way. That's what I got that for. Now when I put the 2x4 right there, that'll bridge that gap when I put the new one up. And of course there's a ledge or a header right there for the ceiling to rest on over here. So I might as well take a look from the inside because it's a pretty rare sight to see, right? No roof. No ceiling. A jagged cut. But yeah. All right, so there's a new one on. It just barely fits on this lip there, which works out pretty well. Uh, my next step is I need to put make a new header. So I'll rip down some three quarter inch plywood that I got for there and there. Then I can cut the new joist to fit, which is nice because uh, I can just drill a hole and feed the wires through that too. So that's the next step. All right, so that's the first one that's going to go in. Of course, the ceiling's temporarily installed and I did get these three quarter inch headers put back in. Uh, I'll have to make some adjustments as I tighten up this stud into the or this joist into the adjoining joist. But I think we're looking okay. Hopefully we'll have the next one put back once we check back in. All right, so this is getting secured down to the rear metal, the frame that actually opens up the, or frames out the rear opening. I have this all the way across the top. It is just toenailed from underneath. And then the deck itself is going to add a lot of strength and stability to it. Uh, yeah, I think we're looking really good. Just have a few more screws to put in, and then we'll be able to put the deck on. So the uh, block, this uh, radius block on the passenger side was all rotted out, so I'm just making a new one here. Got the bandsaw set up. Right, hopefully that should be close enough. I think it's gonna be. So this just goes right there, kind of. Fills in the gap for the molding, the aluminum molding to follow. And this one's gonna go right over here. Looks like that's gonna fit. Might have to do a little bit of shaping with the grinder, but that's fine. That's how the factory does it too. It looks really good. So don't forget, because of the oversized uh, width of these trailers eight foot is not long enough now i could just add an additional strip of like three inches but that's just silly so i'm going to seam it in the middle so i actually need two of these that are going to be almost double the length that i need 
but I have to cut them in half. Just because I can't, uh, they couldn't find a 10 foot sheet of, uh, I don't know, it's like a half inch, three eighths, I don't remember what it was. Doesn't matter. If I found a 10 foot sheet of it, it would be fine, but all I could get is four by eight sheets. It's a very common problem on toy haulers because they have to be wider than a standard uh, vehicle because a vehicle has to go inside of them. So eight foot uh, dimensions aren't aren't quite enough on a, on a toy hauler. So that's something that gets very, very cumbersome and very difficult sometimes. All right, so I got some insulation. I bought some more to replace it. The missing stuff. All right. This is where I put the seam right in the middle. This will be the deck. Pretty flush right there. I might have to finesse it a little bit. But that's pretty much how it's going to be. There'll be a seam down the middle. Doesn't really matter too much because, again, there's going to be a seam, a little chunk right there where I'm going to block in a little replacement part of the deck. Uh, so, yeah, I just need to get a little more insulation right there, and then we can put this deck on. And I hope you guys saw I already routed the wires for the... Uh, these are the security lights, the utility lights, the red and uh, white wires, and right here is going to be the tail lights. So I already did run those through. I had to run them through the center support, too, right there. So let me just get this going, and then uh, we'll be able to just do that block, put the roof on, and then, man, we'll be able to... Put the rear wall back together. All right, we'll just be doing a little bit of a patch right here. Cut out this section, free frame a little bit underneath so that the uh, deck has something to mount to. Now, please understand, in an ideal world, we would not be doing this. This is just because the value of this tra uh, trailer is not very high. I would have liked to have replaced the deck all the way to the other side, but then I'd have to be seaming in a new roof anyways, because this stuff kind of destroyed my fingers yesterday trying to rip it back. All right, so the new, or the repair to the deck is done. I'll have to grind this out a little bit, but if you remember, I didn't like that this was tucked underneath the the rear cap wall. So the phylon want to come up over the top of this. I don't like that. So what I want to do before I put the roof on is rebuild the wall. So I have to put an underlayment of glue on. We'll glue and staple that on. Then we're going to relaminate this wall right here. This is the original phylon material right here. So what I need to do is get the old glue on off of it and uh, get it ready to be reinstalled. So I'll just be removing all this Luan material and get it back to a normal phylon. So I just have to go through the tedious action of uh, getting this prep. I don't know how tedious I'll be because Luan will stick to Luan really well. So I don't know that I'll have to get this layer off. There's three layers to Luan. So the top one that's on the ground there, this middle one that's 90 degrees and then the one on the bottom. So if I can separate this really easily, I think I'll probably end up leaving this. I'll uh, clean it up to get all the dirt. But I don't see any real reason to spend four hours separating this layer of Luon. Because like I said, Luon will stick to Luon. I think that's pretty good. I just have to uh, clean it up a little bit, but yeah, we'll keep this layer. If anything, it's an extra layer of wood, right? <laughs> and then I'll be taking that piece of Luan and putting it over there after I put insulation on there. So, if we were going to do a legitimate repair on this, uh, something that's supposed to last a long time, I'd probably be putting new phylon on, anyways, uh, just because it's already been damaged a little bit. Not too much, it'll still have a lot of weatherproofing, but there's staple holes in it that I'll have to make sure we get cleared out pretty well, or get sealed up pretty well. But this will work just fine for what we're doing on here. Uh, 
And yes, I am currently using my RV as an air compressor. So that's another handy reason to have an RV. So I already have the adhesive up on there. I'll just go ahead and set you guys up. I'm gonna staple this thing on. So with that on, now I just have to laminate it. So we use a contact adhesive for that. But before I get myself in a bind, it's gonna be very difficult for one guy to hold this in space and try to line it up perfectly. So I'm gonna take up this piece of strap, or this piece of scrap, drill some holes in it, and I'm gonna use that as a guide or a ledge to rest it on up there. All right, so now I have a ledge right here for it to rest on. If you've seen my Winnebago roof videos, you should know, be familiar with 440 Red Stay Bond Adhesive. This is good for wood to file on. Basically everything but foam. So we'll put that in the gun, and then we'll spray this side, we'll spray that side, and it's a contact adhesive. Put it in place, and then roll it out, and then hopefully it should be laminated. Okay, so with that laminated on there, that ledge worked out pretty well. So we are here, looking over the side. Now I just need to bend it over and secure it at the top. But before I do that, while it's flat, I can get a razor edge and we can scrape all the uh, old sealant off and then we'll start putting it together. Once we get this all cleaned off, we'll be able to Secure this edge down with some screws and some staples. And then the rubber can go over the top of it, just like that. Now, if that molding pops loose again, the water won't go how the factory had it, with the rubber tucked in underneath and this on top. It won't go underneath and into the wall. Worst case scenario, it'll go underneath, maybe hit a few screw holes, but for the most part, it'll just shed off over the top of this. Kind of like a house in a shingle. Luckily, I have a template here where to drill my holes to get my wires out. So that's why I haven't put this up yet, just so I can make sure I find the wires. Well, excellent. All the wires were found. Now I can go ahead, push this down and screw it down. All right, so now we are about ready to put the roof back down. I'll just have to grind the surface and put some fiber mesh tape. It's not vital, but that's the industry standard day to do it. So I'm gonna do it the industry standard. Uh, the industry standard is not to reuse a membrane though. So I'm gonna do my best to get as much of this clumps or chunks off, but no guarantee that uh, there won't be some left over. Remember, this is a budget rebuild, uh, trying to spend a little, as little money as possible. So I don't want to tear this membrane. I'd rather just have a chunk underneath that, a bump, than a tear, because that's the whole purpose of the membrane, is not to be to, uh, have a hole in it. Let me spend some time doing my best I can on it. 
It is just a uh, fiber mesh tape. It's drywall self-adhesive tape. It's a little bit sticky on one side, so it sticks down. Uh, and we're just going to overlap the joint, kind of protect the membrane. Now this is felt back already, so it's not vital, but it feels like it's what you're supposed to do. Now it may not look like it, but I did clean around the vent right there and here. Got all the old sealant off in here too. Using the Dicor water-based adhesive. This is felt back, so it's going to take a lot of this stuff. We'll be putting it down really wet so that uh, it absorbs into that pretty well. So I'm just going to pour some out and then roll it out. Pretty thick because this is felt back. I want to make it really wet so that it gets absorbed into this felt. Okay, well, I feel like it's on there pretty thick, so now when I roll it out, and I bond it together, if I pull it back, well, maybe we need some more on it. All right, I'll put some more on. Since, since I decided to uh, roll it on the membrane, too. Now, normally, you would pull it pretty tight as you put it down, but... This is felt back, it's already been pulled tight, so I'm just gonna try to roll it out to make sure I'm getting good adhesion. I'm gonna be using these uh, truss screws, screw it down. And yes, I already do have putty underneath this. So, really, the next part is just gonna be putting all the molding back down. Uh, over on the side, I already have the one on top to keep it from flapping now, but now it goes under the molding and over the top of here. So now I, once I get this molding on right there, I'll just cut off the excess rubber or TPO and just be time to seal. I'll also be throwing that uh, 14 by 14 generic vent on to replace that broken one. Hopefully we'll just be sealing up here shortly. Vents on, the moldings on. We'll hit this with Dicor self-leveling because it does work. It is a good product, and then we'll do the side. Other than that, we're going to cut the membrane right there. I'm just following it under this molding right there too. Very nice. Okay, right about. So I to put the molding back on, but I think it looks pretty good. I mean, it might look better in the shade rather than in the sun, but so far we're looking good. Okay, so one of the last things I did is I did put a piece of batten strip right there, the wide one, to kind of trim it out. It's still a little dirty, I'll have to clean it, but I think it looks pretty good. I don't think anybody would be the wiser that this wasn't like this originally. At least that's what I'm gonna tell myself. But here on the outside, I have most of the molding back on. Obviously I don't have the trim insert or the lights on, but everything's looking really well. I can even climb on the roof. It's nice and strong here now, it's not rotten. I can stomp up and down on it, so I feel pretty good about that. And even right here, about where I patched, still nice and strong. And the transition doesn't look too bad, and we have a new vent itself. Now, when it comes to putting these lights on, it's going to be pretty standard stuff. But there's one thing I do want to show. I recently started using these Wagos, or Wagos, whatever you want to call them, as uh, connectors instead of crimp connectors. Just a little lever you li lift up, just like that, and now it's... And you just push it on right there. And put the lever back down again. And now it's really tight. I'm pulling on this wire pretty hard. Uh, I'm a bit of a big fan of these now since I finally discovered them. I guess feel like I'm the last one to do it. What I also like about these 
is you can remove them just that easily. You don't need tools to remove it. So if you're troubleshooting, it's a good troubleshooting kick too. Yeah, and before I get too deep in this, these are the sealants I'll be using. Uh, this is just 100% silicone. This stuff's clear. I'll be using it probably on the lights. This is 100% silicone. This is white. Probably be using that on the side moldings. This is the Dicor lap sealant, but this is the non-leveling, non-sag. That'll go on the sidewall molding. And then, of course, our standard Rudy lap sealant from Dicor. That'll go on top of the roof itself. It's hard to remember, but this was supposed to be an inexpensive job. Because again, I want to fill in this entire area right there. The water doesn't puddle. Same with on top there and over here. Trying to fill the places where water might puddle. Because water is quite a gap that finding seams if it's allowed to puddle. Now I'm not 100% confident that I promised all this in the budget rebuild, but with that vinyl insert on here, it looks awful. And I'll put some on the sides too, probably, but all the vinyl everywhere else is missing. But we'll try to make it look somewhat presentable. But I did decide to terminate that insert right here. So if water does get stuck behind it, it doesn't get trapped right here and start riding things out. And then it seems just as good to put a termination cap right here. So I'm just going to seal this up really well. Make it look pretty. Oh, I think with this, I think this job's gonna be done. Put Dyco over there to try to seal off that molding. And naturally, one-handed, I made it look bad. So let me clean that up. All right, that's a little bit better. So yeah, like uh, this insert was already broken. It's broken way down there too. And that wasn't on my list of things to do. But I think overall, I'm very pleased with the way this turned out really pleased with it exceptionally pleased and looking from behind I don't think anybody would notice that I just built that it looks really good from there so there it was this is a 2000 and I don't really know and I don't really remember how old this uh, weekend warrior is uh, this was supposed to be a quick budget rebuild and to be honest, it took me the better part of a week to do. It is much later than the sky looks right now on a Friday, but I'm really happy to have this done. But there we are, a much better roof that we did without having to replace the roof. Membrane itself, and we didn't have to seam it, so there's not a seam right at the very back where you'd have two seams. We, don't, we kept it down to one seam. And they, even though this is a older TPO material, it was still in really good shape. Uh, definitely way past its 11 year uh, time frame, but still very durable and long lasting. I'm pretty tired, I'm gonna call it a night, and I hope that helps somebody out there. But the good news is, I got my house right here, so I can clean up pretty easily. That's why the generator's going. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't worry, guys, I did put the Band-Aid on the front cap, so we have a turn -a up there. And it was real of a turn -a so pretty, long lasting, eternally there.